FBI field office has officially opened an investigation into the death of a woman on vacation in Cabo, Mexico. Was Shanquilla Robinson killed by her friends? Did she truly die from excessive alcohol intoxication, as claimed by her friends? These questions and more are still the big questions on the burner for investigators to pull through. Shanquilla Robinson was a young woman who went on a vacation with friends, which turned out to be the last time anyone would see her alive. In this video, we'll be talking about the terrible moments leading to the death of Shanquella Robinson and who could be responsible for it. So be sure to stick around until the end because number one is guaranteed to shock you. Before we begin, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below saying I have subscribed and I will personally reply to your comment. Let us begin. Number six, we've never believed their story, Mrs. Salamandra. After Shanquella's death was announced, her mom, Mrs. Salamandra Robinson, said she wasn't convinced by the submission made by her late daughter's friends who broke the news to her after returning from Mexico with her belongings. Shanquella Robinson was born on the 9th of January, 1997 in Charlotte, North Carolina. She graduated from the historically black college university, Winston-Salem State University. The late U.S. national became a social media sensation for her modeling career and her successful boutique business, which specializes in selling baby brands. Born into an Afro-American family, Shanquella Robinson ran her brand name under Exquisite Kids and Exquisite Boutique, with both brands predominantly based in North Carolina, until her death. In an interview with CBS, Mrs. Salmandra said, I never believed them anyway, she said. Mrs. Salmandra Robinson said she wasn't convinced about the explanation made by her late daughter's friends, because none gave a straight report, and their statements consistently contradicted each other. Another reason she and her family believed their late daughter's friends were hiding a key piece of evidence on the cause of Shinkola's death was the autopsy report. She said her late daughter's body showed signs of strangling and bruises. She also said one of the six friends that broke the report of Shanquilla's death to the family was a family friend whom they'd known with their daughter for years. Surprisingly, the fellow had not visited the family after the autopsy report ran contrary to their explanation of Shanquilla's cause of death in Cabo, Mexico. Number five, the case file reopened as pressure mounts. After losing Shanquella under a gruesome circumstance, Mrs. Salmandra claimed that her late daughter's friend stole around $10,000 from the deceased purse. She also claimed that the family did all they could to get the authorities to review the cause of death by carrying out further investigations. Surprisingly, their pleas were turned down, and the case never gained support from the mainstream media either. To help the family with the legal cost, Mrs. Salmandra said Shanquilla's younger sister, Quila, created a GoFundMe page because the U.S. State Department said there was nothing to review since there was no foul play in Shanquilla's cause of death. But the family matriarch said they didn't relent despite the setbacks. They have continued to push for justice. And with the support of black social media users, the case is currently being reviewed by U.S. authorities through the FBI. According to a statement by the FBI Charlotte Field Office, the federal agency confirmed that the case has been reviewed and that the Bureau is collaborating with the authorities in Mexico to investigate what really happened between Shanquilla Robinson and her friends before she was reported dead in less than 72 hours after arriving at the Cabo Resort. Number four, events leading to Shanquilla's death in Cabo, Mexico. According to Shanquilla's parents' testimony, the bereaved family said their late daughter had taken the trip to San Jose del Cabo, Mexico, in the company of six other friends whom she had met during her days at the university. Barely 24 hours after arriving at the resort, news filtered in that Shinquella was dead while her suitcase was sent back to her parents, Bernard and Salamandra, in North Carolina. The six friends, now popularly known on social media as the Cabo Six, told Shanquilla's parents that their daughter died from heavy drinking and alcohol poisoning. According to the details of arrival released from the resort officials, Shanquilla and six other people had arrived at Cabo on the 28th of October, which means she died on the 29th 
in the same month. While everyone was still holding on to Shen Kuo's friend's statements, the autopsy report, which was released on the 10th of November, shows that the 25-year North Carolina-based entrepreneur suffered from a severe spinal cord injury and broken neck just 15 minutes before her death. Number three, the bubble bursts. Five days after the release of Shanquella's autopsy report, horrifying footage was released online. The first segment of the video captured Shanquella's arrival at the San Jose del Cabo Baja California resort, and judging by that footage, she was obviously in high spirits, and there was no sign that she was drunk or mentally unstable. In the same footage, Shanquella was heard calling her friends on the phone, asking them why it was taking them so long to arrive, and also wanted to know the swimsuit they were all planning to wear. The second video documented where everything went out of hand. In the 22nd video, Shanquella was seen naked while having a conversation with another individual in the room. It was that individual that rushed up to her aggressively, knocking her to the ground before hitting her furiously. While the attacker was clothed, Shanquella, on the other hand, was naked and defenseless throughout the fight. Also in the room was another person, which the police believed to be a male, judging by his voice. The individual was captured filming the incident and was heard saying, at least fight back, in reference to Shanquella. According to Bernard Robinson, the late Shanquella's father said he was heartbroken because, from the footage, the family now realized that the attack which led to the death of his daughter was premeditated by the people her late daughter referred to as friends. He told TMZ, my daughter's not a fighter, man. She's not a fighter. Not at all. Number two, the first respondent report. After the aggressor had successfully inflicted serious damage on Shanquella, the police report showed that the doctor who responded to the emergency call treated Shanquella for four hours before she died. The police report also showed that the situation got to the emergency unit at 2.23 p.m. on the 29th of October, a day after Shanquella and her friends arrived at the resort. One hour after Shanquella called the emergency unit, the police report showed that the doctor arrived at the resort one hour after, and at that point, the medical report showed that Shanquella was found in critical condition and was not responsive because she had suffered a seizure. While the doctors were battling to revive Shanquella, it was reported that they recommended that they needed to call an ambulance, but surprisingly, Shanquella's friends refused the request and instead asked the doctors to administer the treatment right there at the resort apartment. However, when it became obvious that failure to take her to the hospital could lead to death, they finally agreed to the doctor's recommendation. However, every effort to keep Shanquella alive ended in futility as she was declared dead by 5.57 p.m. But what remains puzzling was the initial doctor's report on Shanquella's time. The initial report before the autopsy indicated that Shanquella died 15 minutes after suffering a broken neck. Still, the same result was silent on the nature of the treatment administered to her. It was not until later that the doctor finally said that they administered 14 rounds of CPR, five doses of adrenaline, and six discharges of defibrillators to keep her alive during the four-hour interval before the ambulance arrived. So, the big question on everyone's lips is whether Shanquella's friends told the doctors she had alcohol poisoning or the doctor's failure to diagnose that she had a spinal injury influenced the treatment administered to her, which probably led to her death. Number one, femicide or murder? Through the Baja California Attorney General, the Mexican government, Daniel De La Rosa Anaya, released a statement stating that they are working with the U.S. government to unravel the real cause of Shanquella's death. He further stated that there is no impunity regarding the case at hand, and they are waiting for the U.S. authorities to help them make everyone involved available for an interview while waiting for the main suspect's extradition. In the meantime, there is public pressure on the U.S. government to speed up the process of deporting the culprits known as the Cabo Six back to Mexico, where the crime was committed. Meanwhile, in Mexico, 
The Baja California government said they have already opened a femicide investigation after the country initially came under heavy criticism for allowing Shanquella's companions to leave the country despite knowing fully well that Shanquella's cause of death would need further investigation to substantiate the claims made by her friends. With the case now open in both Mexico and the United States, Bernard Robinson, Shanquella's father, said all he wants is justice for his late daughter, and he hopes the U.S. and Mexico governments will do the right thing to ensure those who committed the crime that claimed Shanquella's life do not go unpunished. And that's a wrap for today's video. You can let us know what you think in the comment section. And if you enjoyed today's video, we bet you'll enjoy the others that we have for you. So don't hesitate to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button to get up to date on all our amazing videos and hit that notification bell so you never have to miss an update from our channel. There's more to the entertainment. Check out this related video to see more. I will see you in the next video.